Becoming multiplanetary is essential to extending dramatically the probable lifespan of civilization, and all the forms of life on Earth, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said in February. He hopes that humans can create a sustainable city on the Red Planet before the year 2050. SpaceX is developing a fully reusable Starship launch vehicle, at its Starbase facility in Boca Chica Beach, located at the southernmost tip of Texas along the border of Mexico. The sandy region is home to a protected U.S. national wildlife refuge that neighbors the launch pad. SpaceX is currently pending approval to perform Starship's first orbital flight test, due to an ongoing environmental assessment, performed by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration. The U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service, and the U.S. Department of Commerce, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The review is meant to ensure safe spaceflight operations, and assess potential environmental impacts to the area. The agencies started to conduct the assessment around 11 months ago, and are scheduled to complete it by May 31, after four delays. See the FAA Environmental Assessment Timeline. The U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service submitted a 141-page biological and conference opinion report to the FAA, on May 12. It details SpaceX's potential impacts at Boca Chica Beach, and what the company can do to help minimize the impact of its activities on wildlife. The U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service, concluded that, SpaceX Starbase operations' potential effects on wildlife can be mitigated, with basic measures, including use of Starlink to monitor animals 24-7 with solar-powered equipment. Although we anticipate some incidental take to occur, the implementation of the conservation measures proposed, should ultimately result in avoidance and minimization of adverse effects, wrote U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Services in the document. As part of the project description, the FAA, SpaceX has agreed on voluntarily measures to avoid and minimize impacts to the ocelot, jaguarundi, northern aplomato falcon, piping plover, red knot and sea turtles, the document states. There's only seven species of sea turtles in the world, and the Boca Chica Beach, South Padre Island region is home to five species. U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service said that, SpaceX, is not likely to jeopardize the continued existence of the species listed above. The action area encompasses a relative small portion of the rangewide habitat, of each of the species, addressed in this opinion and small portion of each species population, they wrote. According to the document, one of SpaceX's requirements will be to inspect the areas near the launch pad, during sea turtle nesting season. SpaceX employees have previously volunteered, during winter to rescue cold stunned sea turtles in the Boca Chica, South Padre Island region. The document reveals that, SpaceX Starbase plans to use the Starlink Broadband Satellite Internet Service, to assist with conservation efforts at Boca Chica Beach. To minimize potential impacts to listed species and critical habitat units, SpaceX will implement terms and conditions outlined in the BCO, and the attached associated plans. SpaceX agrees to continue to work with the service, U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, to select appropriate native plant species to revegetate temporarily disturbed areas, said the agency. SpaceX will reduce impacts to vegetated wetlands and wind tidal flats, include locating the parking area predominantly in uplands, and locating installing, and siting payload and processing facilities away from wetlands. The U.S. Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service, BCO draft document has elaborate recommendations, and requirements for SpaceX operations at Starbase. Federal wildlife experts recommended SpaceX to help protect wildlife, and the ecosystem by collaborating with professional biologists to monitor animals, and vegetation. As well as provide annual monetary donations to local environmental organizations, to assist with conservation efforts. However, the best possible comparison has always been SpaceX's own environmental assessment, for an almost identical orbital class Starship launch site, at Florida's Kennedy Space Center. Despite the fact that no untouched ground would be broken, and even with the apparent might of NASA behind it, it took the FAA and SpaceX about a full year, to complete a Pad 39 AEA, for up to 24 Starship launches per year. As such, the idea that the FAA would be able to complete a P for Boca Chica Starship launches in six months, was always almost unimaginable. 
Outside of email chains and boardrooms, however, it's no longer clear that completing the P and securing an FAA launch license, are the limiting factor for the first orbital Starship test flights. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced that, SpaceX is changing the prototypes assigned to the first full-stack launch, likely to Booster 7 and Ship 24. If anything goes wrong during those tests, any significant design issues are discovered, or any damage is caused, it's entirely possible that, what Elon Musk says could take as few as two months, will actually take more like four to six. Only time will tell. For now, the FAA likely has a few months before, Starship's South Texas P and full stack launch license, truly become the limiting factor for the rocket's first orbital launch attempt. But now, SpaceX needs the green light from the FAA. The company told the FCC that its objective for the first orbital flight test is, to collect as much data as possible during flight. To quantify entry dynamics, and better understand what the vehicle experiences in a flight regime, that is extremely difficult to accurately predict or replicate computationally, SpaceX said. This test provides engineers, with insight needed to know whether the spacecraft, and rocket are capable of withstanding the stresses of spaceflight, and see whether there's any leaks in the structure. The videos of the test procedure suggest that, engineers tested ground systems at the launch pad, known as, stage zero, which includes lines, that load propellant into Starship via plumbing on the quick disconnect arm. Once SpaceX completes proof testing, the next phase of testing is expected to be a static fire test of Booster 7, with 33 Raptor engines while Starship remains at top. This test is performed with the Methalox propellant, liquid methane and liquid oxygen. This data will anchor any changes in vehicle design, or concept of operations. After the first flight and build better models for us to use in our internal simulations. The assessment looks at environmental impacts of SpaceX's initial mission profile, and reviews debris recovery. The Starship program aims to develop vehicles for the interplanetary travel, of cargo and humans to the Moon, Mars and beyond. However, the Musk-led company still needs to wait for the Federal Aviation Administration, for four more days, to complete its environmental assessment, before Starship can leave the ground. To perfect the rockets, SpaceX plans to conduct several test launches over the next few years, all of which will require a permit or vehicle operator license from the FAA. SpaceX already has FAA environmental approval to launch Starship from the East Coast. It started building a second Starship orbital launch tower, at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, historic launch complex 39A, in Cape Canaveral, Florida, where the first crewed flight is expected to lift off from. The company recently announced the Polaris program, that is funded by Shift 4 Payments founder Jared Isaacman. The program's crew members will test new SpaceX spacesuits designed for spacewalks, as well as new technologies, aboard a pair of Crew Dragon missions, that will lead up to the first crewed Starship spaceflight. If the process of securing a limited license, for far less risky suborbital Starship launches, is anything to go off of. Securing a similar license for orbital Starship launches, with 10 to 20 times the explosive potential could be an agonizing months-long ordeal. It's ambiguous if the FAA is already deep into that process or if it's waiting for a complete, approved P to begin work on Starship's first orbital launch license. Thanks for watching this video, and it's a super interesting topic if you like this make sure to subscribe, if you have any crazy ideas about what we should cover in next video please comment it below, and we'll see if we can get to it so thanks again for watching and goodbye.